What did we not talk about that you think is an extremely important thing for people to understand? And then, you know, going forward, I mean, what surprised me the most is everyone in this field is surprised at how fast this happened. And so I was just kind of wondering how that happened. And then my last question, you can choose which one to answer is, is, is it pretty clear that OpenAI is way ahead of everyone, is gonna be a big leader in this development? And based on that, are you pretty happy that Sam Altman's the CEO as far as a guy that seems to be also self-aware, understands this field, and, you know, or will he ultimately be subject to the forces of Moloch? Moloch. <laughs> There's a few questions there. Yeah. The reason I think many people had underestimated how quickly it was going to go is because we made the same mistake thinking about intelligence as we made thinking about flying. If you had argued that uh, we won't be able to build a flying machine that can fly better than birds until after we figure out how birds fly, that would have been epically wrong. We have that beautiful TED Talk video you can click on or watch with a flying bird, but it took 100 years longer to get that than the Wright brothers building the first airplane. There was an easier way to make a flying machine. In the same way, it turns out there is much easier ways of building human-level intelligence than what evolution came up with. People were mistaken, I think, thinking we had to figure out the brain first, and obviously that's going to take, that's really hard. Uh, but if you think about it, it's not so shocking that there are easier ways because evolution has its hands tied when it designs anything. It can it has to only be limited to building machines that can self-assemble. And we can also only use the most popular elements from the periodic table that are abundant in nature and it has to be able to repair itself and stuff like that. When, you, when you're an engineer, you don't care about any of that. So it was much easier. Then you asked about um, if I'm glad that we have the particular leaders we do for the companies that we do uh, and who's ahead. You, know, you asked particularly about Sam Altman here. So I um, greatly respect Sam Altman. Uh, I am particularly... Um, I really believe that his concern is very sincere. I, I really respect and I'm grateful for him speaking very candidly and more candidly than some other tech leaders actually about how grave the risks are. Um, but I am also critical of Sam actually for for releasing um, GPT-4 and ChatGPT the way he did. I, I think, you know, <clears throat> It doesn't mean I don't respect him as a person, but I think it was a mistake because I really think it it fueled the arms race. It fed, it fed Moloch. I think the world would have been better off if they had waited a bit with that <clears throat> so that we could establish clear safety standards first. And, um, you know, I hope I'm wrong. I hope his judgment was correct that this was a wise thing to do. But my current take is that that was a mistake and that we... I also disagree with him about the pause, right? Because he does not think we need we should have a pause right now, and I I think we do. Um, but that said, I don't think Sam Altman or Demis Osamis or anybody else in this game has the power to pause alone anyway. So it really is a responsibility of all of us to um, put pressure on the industry so that we give them the right incentives, that, the incentives to bring out the best in them, not the worst in them. Uh, before we end, can I just say something optimistic also? Because I think it's we've spent a lot of time talking about doom <laughs> and ways in which things can go wrong and, and why they go wrong. And uh, it's very easy to get passive and resigned if we think, oh, we're just screwed. So we're just, just descend into, into decadence and, and like not try to do anything. We're not doomed. Uh, right now, humanity is still quite firmly in charge. Uh, uh, and if we get this right, there's just an enormous upside. First of all, let's not freak out about Moloch and just run for the hills. It's, if, if some country invades you, the worst thing you can do is tell yourself that that foe is invincible and immediately surrender, right? That guarantees that you're going to lose. Yeah. Moloch is not invincible. We've beaten Moloch many times before. The strategy is always collaboration. Moloch tries to divide us. 
we can build new collaboration mechanisms that unite us across countries, companies, etc. We've done it before. <laughs> we can do it again. Um, take that, Moloch. You know, <laughs> and 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 in terms of if we get it right, if we can buy ourselves a little bit of time by by dealing a body blow to Moloch, you know. We can solve the technical AI safety problems. I'm I'm really quite optimistic about that. We got into some aspects of how you can make machines understand our goals, learn them, retain them. How you can prove that things are safe. <clears throat> if there are, I'm confident also that there are plenty of great ideas nobody has even thought about yet because so few people have even worked on it. Right? If you imagine scaling up the AI safety effort to be the size of say the cancer research effort we have, that's a huge step up. <laughs> I'm quite confident that we can solve this and if we're willing to take another five years to get it right, we can do do great things. And finally, why should we try to get it right? I mean, think about how amazing it would be. I, I was in the hospital not that long ago, for example, with a, a friend who was told that she had an uncurable cancer. And I remember thinking to myself, you know, it's not uncurable. It's just that we humans haven't been intelligent enough to figure out the cure yet, right? There are so many things that we are stumped by because we're not quite smart enough to be able to solve them quickly enough. If we can amplify, everything I love about civilization is the product of, of human intelligence. So if we can amplify our intelligence with artificial intelligence, it's just mind boggling how, how amazing things we could do, not just cure all the diseases, eliminate poverty, attain all the UN sustainable development goals that all the countries around the planet agree on. We can go so, so far beyond. We can um, help life really flourish on Earth. It's not a question of whether the US is going to win or China is going to win or Europe is going to win. We can get a situation where everybody gets dramatically better off than now because tech is not a, a zero-sum game, right? <clears throat> where people can live healthy, wealthy, inspiring lives, in a world where AI just helps bring out the best in us, not the worst in us, and and not just on Earth. First of all, we can live on Earth for a very long time. The sun is going to fry, it's going to evaporate the oceans in order a billion years if we don't move a little bit. But I can already point you to astrophysics research showing how we can move Earth into better orbit and get a few billion years. Easy peasy. We don't even have to start that for a few, for 100 million years. And then we can, there's absolutely nothing in the laws of physics stopping life from spreading into this amazing cosmos we have, where it's like we're on this tiny little rock and we're squabbling about this and we might self-destruct here when we have this incredible uh, world out there that we can, we, that is just yearning to come alive. So I, I dream of a future billions of years from now when, when much of our universe is just teeming with life I have no idea what they're going to think about us, but I'm quite sure that if they know about us, they're not going to think that we were insignificant because it's what we do now in our lifetime where we solve the AI alignment problem that made everything possible for them in the first place. So yeah, let's really fight this fight. It's the most important fight ever. Humanity versus Moloch. <laughs> Let's win it. <laughs> I appreciate your thoughts, Professor, and I agree. It's it's somehow been dropped right into our laps in 2023 as the biggest fight of the entire species. <laughs> and so there you go. And what a time to be alive. Right? Uh, look, I really appreciate the time. I think you bring a really uh, valuable and nuanced and unique point of view to this entire conversation happening with AI. And I think yours is an in integral part. So thank you. I'd like to, yeah, definitely stay in touch and continue having these conversations, maybe even throughout the rest of the year because time is of the essence. And one thing I've learned, Professor, about communication is a repetition game. So I think we have to continue to put these ideas out so people understand them. I learned that from the politicians. It's a repetition game. So. I appreciate you tirelessly having these conversations. Let's continue having more of these in the future. And again, thank you for everything you're doing. Thank you so much for what you're doing. My pleasure. All right, take care.
So Jim Rickards has just recorded a video that's not available to anyone in the public, and he's gonna be talking about how this upcoming recession is gonna be fast, it's gonna be bloody, it's gonna be nasty. But at the same time, he's gonna show you how you can position yourself to profit from all of this chaos. Now we've made this video only available to our viewers. Go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim, watch that immediately. I can't say enough good things about Jim Rickards. He understands the global economic system better than any guest I've ever had on London Real. His predictions are almost uncannily true, and you can learn how to profit from his vision, from his expertise, and his understanding of economics. So go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim or click the link below. It's an excellent, excellent look on what's gonna happen in the future and how you can position yourself to profit from that. Jim is one of the best in the business, one of my favorite guests on London Real, and he's very, very good at predicting the future and showing us all to profit from it. So click the link and I hope you enjoy. The greedy bankers are about to do it again. In 2008, they crashed our financial system and nearly bankrupted the entire global economy. Then they received trillions of dollars in government bailouts. And after, they demanded fat bonuses paid for by you, the taxpayer. It turns out the banks haven't just been screwing the American taxpayers, they're also screwing over their investors. Turns out uh, the banking industry is the worst place you could put your money despite enormous taxpayer bailouts. Now the bankers are back to take away your financial freedom. They lie and tell you that cryptocurrency isn't safe. They try to make it illegal for you to choose how to invest your hard-earned money. They lie and say cryptocurrency is used by money launderers and criminals. But look at the record. It's the banks themselves that launder hundreds of billions of dollars every year to the biggest criminal operations in the world. Leaked documents have revealed how some UK banks have helped criminals, money launderers and Russians under sanctions. American authorities discovered that the Sinaloa cartel moved $881 million through HSBC accounts as bank officials turned a blind eye to the illegality. The bankers lie and say cryptocurrency is not a real investment. Meanwhile, the smartest CEOs in the world are buying billions and billions of it. The truth is that banks lie about cryptocurrency because it makes them scared. The banks take $9 trillion per year of your hard-earned money, and they are worried that they will finally be exposed. They're scared because crypto means they can no longer control your money, which means they can no longer control you. They are scared because you might actually understand your money and intelligently decide what to do with it. Now is the time for us to come together, fight back, and take control. It's time to educate ourselves, our families, and our communities. Because financial education means financial freedom. We know that cryptocurrencies will help us build the new decentralized financial system of the future. A banking system that is of the people, by the people, and for the people. A banking system where access to finance is a fundamental human right. A banking system that is free and fair and welcomes all humans on this earth. The DeFi revolution is happening. We, the people, can no longer be fooled. We choose to take control of our finances. We choose to take control of our freedom. We choose to take control of our future. Join us and let's take back our financial freedom forever.